So you're going to want to stick around because this is what the result will be after this video is finished. Now, if you're interested in game development, check the video description where there's a course that will teach you game development. Now to the video. So we'll be continuing from part two of this video series where the end result look like this. If you haven't seen part two of the video series, check the YouTube description. Okay, so this is where I started to make the GUI manager. As you can see, it allows us to register interfaces. I also made the object gathering interface, which is why you see gathering resources and a progress bar. Progress bars and inventory items were also implemented, though the real inventory won't come until a lot later. So next I implemented the ability for the server to be alerted when you click an object, such as a tree. It will then begin to cut it down and the tree will become a trunk. However, no animation is yet present. I accomplished this by creating actions in the game server and all actions can be interrupted, such as if you're chopping a tree and you get attacked, you should no longer be chopping the tree. I made a tree game action class that is responsible for all tree related actions for all types of trees in the game. And here we can see the gathering progress bar in action. So we're hitting the tree without the animation. I know it's heads back to front. Don't worry, that gets fixed. And uh, it basically hits it and then says you received a log, right? You get me? Obviously, there's no inventory at the moment, but later on, you will receive the log from the tree. So that's how it works. It shows you the progress of how, how close you are to getting the log, basically, right? And this is the server code responsible for doing that. So this is when I decided that the current player model is really bad. Uh, so I started using this one, which looks a lot better. Okay. And I had some massive problems trying to wield an axe on this character. It was due to relative scaling, which took me hours to figure out. I figured it out in the end by making the character huge and I zoomed into it to see the axe on his finger like a ring. During figuring this out, that's how we ended up with the flying man that you see here. And here is the result after I fixed that problem. You can see he's got the axe in his hand and he's chopping the tree. Okay, so it looks really nice. It's a great animation. I made the decision I needed a better looking map. So I created a height map like this and I generated a 3D model from it. And now you're about to see the result. So I was also experimenting with lighting at this time, which is why the trees look a bit weird. I was basically trying to make it look a bit darker. I later changed my mind on that decision, but you can see that it looks very nice. The map is very nice. It just needs a bit of texturing. Again, I was having fun with lighting here and trying to set the character on fire, some sort of like power up thing. And you can see it lights up the trees as he walks by. So again, I was experimenting with lighting here. So at some point we might have enchanted weapons. So I was experimenting with that here. You can see there's a flame coming off his sword. It didn't look too nice to be honest, but it was a first attempt, but I scrapped it in the end. I might come back to that in the future. You can see when he hits the tree, it does a pretty cool effect though. And here's my first attempt at implementing water. You can see it does look quite nice. It's quite basic, but it's quite nice. And I kind of like that greeny color. It gives like a swamp type of feel. Here was my first attempt at texturing the map. I don't really like it to be honest, though I did improve the water a lot, uh, but the texturing was too much in my opinion. So I kind of moved away from this idea. I also implemented waves. You can see that the sea comes up now, uh, which is pretty, pretty interesting. So this was a more simple gradient design that I came up with. And you can see it's a lot more simple. It's not too much for the eyes. It's just a simple gradient. Uh, so later I would add a bit of grass, but this is kind of the stony texture that I went with and the sea looks quite nice too. Yeah, so this is the grassy texture I was talking about. And I also added in some castle walls, which will basically be where the safe zone is. It's essentially a city 
there's nothing there at the moment, but we'll have a castle, a church, maybe not a castle here, but in the capital city we'll have a castle. But here you'll have a church, a barracks, and things like that. Now this is where I implemented a pathfinding algorithm. So now you can no longer walk through objects. You click somewhere, it'll generate a path, and it'll walk around the tree, as you can see, rather than walk through it, which is uh, pretty neat because we needed that. So I started implementing the inventory here. So you can see that we have an inventory full of logs. And obviously when you hit the tree, you'll get the logs. Also, I implemented item stacking. This won't apply for logs in the long run. We're just testing it here. So you can see you have uh, many slots of a thousand logs. You know, in the future, you might have a million coins, right? So stacking is important. So at this time I implemented NPCs and they basically can move around in the game. Uh, but this guy doesn't look so good, right? So I replaced his model uh, with a different one. This is General Baldrick. And this is his revised model, which looks a hell of a lot better. I mean, look how big he is compared to our character. This will be the guy who first trained you when you first join the actual uh, game. He'll guide you on getting started. So General Baldrick. So I swarm many of them to test performance and we kind of, our FPS kind of dropped quite a lot. So there will need to be some optimization of these actual characters and maybe the game itself so that it can handle more entities. So this is where this part comes to an end. The final thing I did was I made this perspective. Uh, tell me if you like this perspective. Because personally, I think it should be a little more higher, the camera, so it points a bit more to his head rather to his side. But let me know what you think if you like this perspective. Maybe it should be optional for the player to decide the perspective they want. Let me know what you think. So thanks for watching guys. Don't forget there's a game development course in the description if you want to learn game development. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave this video here for you to continue watching. And uh, make sure you subscribe for the next part of the video. I hope you're as happy with this as I am.